This is my IT11 capacitor checker from uh, Heathkit. And uh, I've been working on it. It arrived a couple days ago. Cleaned it up, got everything nice and shiny. Did some work in the back, did some, some calibration. Right now, everything is working on this except for the measurements of the last two capacitor measurements, X.01 and X1. And they're not working because they use uh, electrolytic capacitors and those electrolytic capacitors are out of spec. The .0001 is a microcapacitor and it works just fine. But what I want to show you is I have a capacitor here. This is an old one. It came out the National 173, NC173. And it's a 0.01 microfarad capacitor and it's rated at 400 volts. And this is probably one of the primary reasons why people plug in old radios and equipment and it just sets on fire and dies. This tester, probably its most useful function is to show why that happens. If you look in the uh, um, the magic eye tube here, what you'll see is when it's open like that on the bottom, when, when that area is not closed, that means there's no current flowing through here, or I believe less than two milliamps opens it all the way, something really small. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp up this DC voltage and each time I'm going to watch and see what happens with that eye. I've already tested this one, obviously. That's why I'm using it for uh, this demonstration. Now, the equipment which it was plugged into saw about um, 250 to 300 volts DC um, normally. You know, uh, it was basically basically part of a circuit for plate voltage. However, it, if you were to look at this uh, capacitor on a, a capacitor checker, you would find that it was slightly out of spec with regard to capacitance, but what you can't check on a modern capacitor checker is the amount of DC voltage that has to run through it and how much that DC is going to leak through and treat the capacitor more like a resistor. So what I'm going to do first, now it's connected, I'm going to switch this button down here to leakage. And what you saw is because there is a current that that flows while the capacitor charges, it immediately uh, stops, you know, it stops uh, the flow of electrons once the capacitor becomes saturated. And you saw it close and then immediately open back up as a capacitor charge. And right now it's at about three volts. I know it's just under three volts when I measured the DC. So I'm gonna turn it up to six and we'll watch what happens. It's gonna, it's gonna charge and then it's gonna open up again. That means that six volts DC work just fine. Now remember this capacitor is rated to 400 and probably saw about 300, 350. So I'll move to 10 volts. And you can see 10 volts. It opened up, but it's it's really slow. And, and it hasn't it hasn't completely opened back to where we want it. Now what I could do with this capacitor. Just for this demonstration, I can actually reform it by purposely uh, allowing more voltage than it can handle to go through it. And that would allow it to a degree to reform. This would open up very slowly, but once current stops flowing, the capacitor is very sensitive. I get my hand near it and it changes. The capacitor won't improve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to 15 volts. And with that completely closed right now, this capacitor is, is like a resistor and there is current flowing through it from positive to negative and it is not acting like a capacitor. Now mind you, we're at 15 volts. 300, 350 volts, that would be a problem. But if I leave it here at 15 for just a little bit and I go back down to 10, what you'll find is that 10 now acts as a, as a capa capacitor. But this is really, you know, this is not a really good way to do this. Um, with regard to trying to reform a capacitor. There could be other issues, there could be arcing or whatnot. And we only went from 10 to 15. To, to get this thing up to 400, obviously, I, I wouldn't want to run this tester past 15 or 25 at this point. You know, there's 15, and there's 25. Just what you're seeing is there, there's just current flowing straight, straight across it. I guess if you, you were to spend several hours slowly ramping it up, you could you could restore the capacitor, but I would have to wonder why, especially if it was a filter cap or some sort of uh, um, 
a coupling capacitor that would cause all sorts of problems in your electronics. I'll bring it back down to 15 and I'll bring it back down to 10 and then we have 6 and 3 and that's basically what it does. If I took a modern capacitor like the polypropylene ones that I have, I could easily work this thing up to 600 volts with no problem. What I plan to do is a uh, sort of a capacitor shootout for the capacitors that I've been collecting from some of my projects to see how bad they really were, you know, what they would have done in circuit. So afterwards, I just hit the discharge button, and now the capacitor is safe. Not that it was really dangerous at 6 volts, but if you're running up 600 volts, you definitely want to discharge a capacitor before you touch it. That's kind of how it works. So thanks for watching.